The purpose of this mini lecture is to demonstrate how to create a solver macro. And it's important to understand that the macro is doing what the dialog box would do, as shown in part one. But it becomes easier for the user to use than using dialog boxes and so forth. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to set up a solver demo. Uh, it's solver demo, which is a we're going to make a macro here. So we're going to go in the developer ribbon, macro, and we're going to have solver demo. I want to avoid using the name just simply solver because that is a built-in set of programs. So solver demo, and I'm going to create this macro. Now. What we're going to have to do before anything will run, so we might as well do it now, is to go to Tools in the References and add in, make sure Solver is checked. Sometimes you have to dig deep into the list before you find it. It's not always right there. It just happens to be right now here. But if I was adding other things into Excel and changing things around, then it might be further down on the list. If you don't check that, nothing's going to work. You can have the best solver program in the world, but it won't work unless you have your reference checked. It's equivalent to doing an add-in um, in regular Excel for solver. OK, now what we're going to do is create a, a solver macro. It is not many lines long, but it is terribly fussy, and I'm likely to make some typos and encounter some errors along the way because the typing that has to be done is very precise, and you'll see why as we go along. So what I'm going to do is do solver reset, one word. Now the reason I'm doing that is that will remove anything left over from the last solver. And that's handy because it's like clearing things out so it doesn't have anything left over from the previous time solver was used. Otherwise, you can have leftover constraints in solver from another application, and, and you don't want that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just put some spaces here so visually you'll be able to see these things a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is actually put the objective function in. And the command for that is solver OK. And then we're going to set cell and identify the objective cell. And mine is in H. I'm going to lock things in as I go along. H8. So I have solver OK, set cell, colon equal. And you'll notice in the language of how solver is written for VBA, there's a colon and an equal sign with all these commands. If you leave one out, it is an error. Trust me, I've done that. Then what we're going to do is separate the parameters. And now we're going to put in max min val and colon equal. And we're going to choose. If we put 1, it's a max. We're going to maximize. 2, it's a minimization. 3, it's a val, a value. So what we're doing there is we're going to have the difference from the chosen beta to be equal to 0. So what we want to do is we want to have a 3 because we're going to have a specify a value. Put a little comma, then value of colon equal, and here's our value, 0. And then by change, colon equal, and now you put the cells that you want solver to change. So I'm going to put in D8 through D37. Now, in order to make this so that you can see all the commands, what I'm going to do is put a comma here, separating for the next command, and I'm going to put an underscore. And then what I'm going to do is hit enter. Now what that underscore does is it says this command is being continued on another line. 
Otherwise, I'd have to write it all the way to the right, and you may not be able to see that as well as the program at the same time. So we're going to continue. Then we type in engine, colon, one, so it's the first choice of the engines that are available. And then we type in the engine description, spell that right, yes, colon, equal, GRG nonlinear. And if you remember from the solver dialog box that that is the default. Now had we not done tools references, when we hit enter this thing would light up red. Now I'm assuming you don't have any other typing errors, but let's say everything was typed perfectly and yet I didn't add in the reference to solver, then things would light up as red. So, so far so good. Leave the space and we go over here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the two constraints. So what I'm going to do is solver add cell ref colon equal and now D38 Relation to formula text colon equal H9. Now let me explain what all this is. What we've got here is in order to make the constraint work where we have a constraint equal to a specific number so, which is having that the percentage invest is equal to 100%. I created a new cell called H9, and that's percentage invested. So I put 100%. This means that the sum of the weights will be equal to 100%. I had to manipulate this a bit. It did not like me to put in the number 1 into the objective of this particular constraint but it does allow me to put a cell reference. Now the relation, the rela way the relations work is, is the order that's in the drop-down box on the solver dialog. Less than or equal is number one, equal to is two, greater than or equal to is three, and so on. So I wanted equal to, so I put a two there, which meant equal to two. So I'm going to have the relationship is that D38 must be equal to H9. D38 is the sum of the weights. H9 has a value of 100% or 1. So I'm saying that the sum of the weights must be equal to 1. And that's all I'm doing in that particular constraint. The next constraint, solver add, cell ref, and this time we have a range. So we have D8 to D oops, 37, so those are the individual weights, put it in quotes, comma, now the relation is equal to, we want less than or equal to the maximum in one stock specified by the user. So we would say relation is equal to 1, which means less than or equal to. And then formula text okay, equal. And now we refer to the cell that the user chose here in terms of the constraint for a given stock. Oops, excuse me, five. All right, so now we've got the objective function in, and we've got two constraints. The first constraint is that the weights must sum to one. The second constraint is that no weight will be greater than whatever the user specified in C5. Now, if we could run it right now, and hopefully we don't have any typos, and it'll work beautifully. But if we ran it right now, we would get a dialog box that the user would have to sort through. So in order to avoid this, and since this is a very simple function that will 
converge very easily, we're going to have that ignored. And what we're saying is just go ahead and let it go through. And in other words, don't put a box that the user has to say OK to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this and see if it works. Now the way I'm going to test it is to go ahead and change something in here, maybe to both of these. Change it to a beta of 1 and a maximum of, let me put, let's see, 8%. And what I'm going to do is now run it. So I can run it right now from the macro box. And I'm going to run it. And everything seems to work. The difference in the chosen beta is zero. Everything adds up to 100%. Now, of course, this isn't very convenient to use. So, of course, you can insert a shape. Take that shape and make it into a run button of some type. However you'd like to visually do this. And I'll make the dark blue. Let's see. Shape fill. And let me just make it look like a button so that the user understands that. And then we're going to assign the macro to this. Assign macro and it'll be the solver macro. So now what happens is if we click on that it should optimize and it does. Now a couple things to keep in mind. Down in the lower left hand corner, if something takes a while to optimize, then you'll see it running in the lower left hand corner and you'll see the different iterations. If it's a well behaved function like this one, this is pretty easy for Excel to solve. We haven't made it do too many things. Then it's so quick that we really don't notice it, but you'll see a little flashing going on in the lower left hand corner. So we can run this from the bit. And you think about what the user does. The user gets to select something here. And right now, nothing's changed. It's not until they hit the button that it's changed. So this is a solver macro. Let me put the macro up one more time so you can see what it looks like. We'll go to Visual Basic. And you see it's very straightforward. Clear out the contents of solver. Set up the objective function, either max, min, or as we in this case value, which is 3. And we have a value of 0, the objective, which the objective is to make sure the difference between the chosen beta and the portfolio beta is 0. We're changing the weights. We're just using the default nonlinear engine. We have two constraints here. Solver, add, cell, ref says, OK, the first constraint we're going to make sure that D38, which is the sum of the weights, is equal to 100%, which is in H9. We're also going to make sure that the weights, which are in D8 through D37, are each less than or equal to whatever the user specified for the maximum in the stock. Then solver solve says go ahead and do it, and then don't need to give us the intermediate dialog box. So that is a solver macro.